So in this video, we're going to be looking at anchoring. So if you remember from the training, we said that when we anchor somebody, we can actually anchor people in various modalities. So it can be a visual anchor, it can be a kinesthetic anchor. We, uh, in fact, I show you during the training how to do stage anchoring and so forth. So there's a lot of different ways in how we can anchor somebody. Specifically though, we're going to be talking about, in this video, we'll be talking about doing a kinesthetic anchor. So we're going to physically touch our client and install an anchor for them. Okay, so let's have a quick overview of the theory of the anchoring. So we gave you a couple of mnemonic devices and the first was race. So we said race is the four steps to anchoring. We're going to have the client recall a past vivid experience. We're going to anchor that client as soon as we go see them go into that state. Then we're going to change their state, i.e. break state, and then evoke the state again, which means we're going to be firing the anchor or setting off the anchor to test it. Remember though that when we recall the experience, it needs to be a vivid experience. It needs to be an intense experience for the client. When we consider the five keys to anchoring, we said the intensity of the experience. If I ask a client, can you remember a time you're totally motivated, and they say something like, mm, yeah, I suppose so. Well, that's not an intense experience. We want to get a state where I say to the client, can you remember a time you're totally motivated, and I really want to see them go ahead and experience that, or get back into that state again. So the intensity is extremely important. So also is the timing of the anchor. As soon as we see that client go into state, we want to provide the anchor. So we won't know exactly when they are at the peak of that state. So as soon as we see them exit that state, that's when we want to release the anchor again. So next we have the uniqueness of the anchor. And here what we mean is we want to anchor the client in a place where it's not inadvertently going to be fired off also something to consider here, well, twofold. First of all, during the training, we suggest normally doing it on the knuckles because, you know, nobody's just going to walk up to you and touch you on the knuckles. Uh, I've seen people who go and anchor others or anchor their clients on, uh, on the knee or on the arm or on the leg, and that's not always appropriate. If a lady comes to see a male practitioner and, you know, a man wants to go ahead and anchor the lady on the leg, so that's not always appropriate. You work with somebody on the knuckles, pretty much everybody is okay with that. We also said, just talking about uniqueness, that when you build a resource anchor for the client, a great way to do their resource anchor as an example might be behind the ear, because there's even less chance of somebody going to be coming and touching them behind the ear to fire their anchor. So that's the uniqueness. Of course, the replication, meaning that the client must go be able to fire their anchor as well and also it actually relates to stacking also which is the number of times so the client must be able to go and stack their anchor they must be able to go and anchor themselves consistently so that they can build on that anchor and be able to replicate it as they are able to fire their anchor when they need to go back into that particular state so that's just a, a quick theory overview and in the next couple of videos what we'll do is we will cover the collapsed anchors as well as chaining anchors. So we'll go more into stacking of anchors then also. So I look forward to seeing you in the next videos.